Hello, I'm Philip Maris, the CEO of Maris Consulting. I'd like to summarise what the fear of constraints in production means. Uh, you might have read this book. It's uh, The Goal by Elie Goldratt. It's been sold in 6 million copies in 30 languages, and it's the, an explanation in form of a novel of how the fear of constraints is applied in a factory. Okay, so what's the basic principle of it all? Well, uh, it's based on the idea that in today's world you can no longer balance a plant correctly. You cannot distribute the work uh, evenly throughout the system so that everybody has just enough work. Okay? And uh, because the work is not uh, equally distributed, in fact, uh, you can represent a factory in, in this way where, for instance, a number of tanks have water flowing through them. Okay? And the diameter of the pipes between the tanks is different because... Uh, the uh, capacities are different, and of course uh, this means that there is in the system a resource with the smallest pipe, a bottleneck in the system. Okay, So the theory of constraints uh, in production, where it was born and in other subjects, is basically all about that. How do you manage this sort of system? Okay, So the uh, production management system is called the drum buffer rope. Uh, the first thing is that one identifies the resource, that is the constraint, here in red, in the middle, for example, say. And what the first thing one does is to exploit it properly. Uh, we have what we call the drum, and in fact that is the planning, scheduling system of the factory. And uh, what is particular about it is that you focus on just that one resource, the bottleneck, and you decide how you're going to use it best according to the order book, for instance. Uh, saying that this or that work order will be done at that particular time. Okay, And that's the first step, so that we ensure that we're using that resource perfectly. The second step is the rope. The rope uh, is this mechanism to launch the material in the factory. Let us assume here that the three operations in front of the bottleneck take two days, for instance. Okay, uh, Well, if uh, we've planned a particular work order in four days' time here, and it takes two days to get the work done in front of it, well, then we have to launch the raw materials in two days' time. Okay, So that would be the simple mechanism. But, of course, if we do this, uh, it won't work, because if there's any kind of breakdowns or fluctuations or disturbances here, uh, the product is going to end up late, and you won't be able to meet the schedule. So, the buffer. Uh, a buffer is inserted just in front of the bottleneck, Okay, and this is a time buffer. It's not a parts buffer, it's a time buffer. It could, for instance, be one day. So in this example, we might say we're going to protect the bottleneck against one day's disturbances in front of the bottleneck, and we would therefore say, well, if I'm going to do it in four days' time, I need one day's protection and two days to get the work done. I'm going to launch it tomorrow in one day's time. Okay? So that ensures that all this part of the factory is under control. There is a second buffer uh, right at the end. Its purpose is different. It's to ensure that any disturbances in the bot non-bottlenecks after the constraint uh, don't uh, impact the date you promised to the client. Okay? So what we're basically saying, if you think back to the tank system, is we want to make sure we don't fill the factory up um, with uh, work in process uh, and we only keep a little bit of work in process in front of the bottleneck to make sure that the bottleneck never stops. Okay? Uh, the uh, strategy in terms of uh, long-term improvement is uh, referred to as the five focusing steps. The first point is to identify the constraint or the constraints in the system. The second idea is to exploit them, make sure that you use them as much as you possibly can, because this will maximize your, your throughput, your sales. The third point is subordinate, subordinate everything else. That's what we've seen with the rope. That's to say that non-bottlenecks will not work according to their own potential, but according to what the constraint in the system requires. And that's quite difficult, of course, because that has, means you have to break or reconsider all your local optimums, I repeat. The non-bottlenecks will not work according to their own potential, but according to what is required of them by the constraint. Finally, once you've got that set going, uh, you could consider elevating the performance of the constraint uh, by investing in um, more machinery or going from two shifts to three shifts or whatever. If you do this sort of thing uh, and you increase the capacity of the bottleneck, of course, the bottleneck might move to somewhere else in the factory. If that happens, you go back to step one, you find out where it's gone, and you keep this process going. Okay, so that's basically what the theory of constraints in production is all about. Uh, if you want to learn some more about it, uh, please do visit our YouTube channel with about 100 videos about the theory of constraints in production, in projects, and, and other subjects. Or uh, you can visit our Maris Consulting website. Thank you very much.